Newt Metamorphosis from Water Sprite to Land Dweller. The Newt's life cycle is truly fascinating. It's a complete metamorphosis that takes them through drastically different stages and environments. It all begins as an egg, typically laid in water, often hidden amongst pondweed or other submerged vegetation. These eggs hatch into aquatic larvae, commonly called efts. Efts are essentially miniature newts with feathery gills. Perfectly adapted for life underwater, they breathe through these gills just like a fish does. They spend their larval stage actively feeding and growing, undergoing several molts as they shed their skin to accommodate their increasing size. As they mature, many species of newt undergo a terrestrial phase, leaving the water altogether. This transformation involves a loss of those external gills and changes in skin pigmentation, often becoming more vibrant or patterned for camouflage on land. Finally, they return to the water to breed, completing an incredible cycle of change. Most amphibians have a pretty straightforward life cycle. They hatch in water as larvae, transform into adults, and then move to land. Newts, however, can be a little different. Some species exhibit an incredible process called patamorphosis, which essentially means retaining larval characteristics while maturing sexually. This leads to a fascinating journey involving both aquatic and terrestrial phases, often blurring the lines between what we consider larva and adult. You might see a newt with feathery external gills, thriving in water like a tadpole, but also exhibiting adult features like developed limbs and even the ability to reproduce. It's truly a remarkable adaptation that demonstrates the incredible diversity of life on Earth. The incredible transformation a newt undergoes actually begins long before we see that familiar adult form. They start life as aquatic larvae, often called efts. Imagine miniature salamanders, tiny, wriggling creatures perfectly adapted for an underwater existence. These eft larvae are truly unique. They possess delicate, feathery gills branching out from their heads, allowing them to breathe efficiently in the water and look closely at their mouths. They're specially designed with filtering structures that enable them to feed on microscopic organisms and algae suspended in the water column, essentially tiny filter feeders. As these tiny F larvae grow, they undergo a fascinating transformation into what's known as a fairy newt. This is a crucial stage in their development, marking the transition to a more terrestrial lifestyle. Fairy newts possess a remarkable ability. They can thrive both in water and on land. You'll notice that even though they're venturing out of the pond, these young newts still hold on to some reminders of their larval past faint. Rudimentary gills remain present along their necks. These small structures help them absorb oxygen from the water when needed, providing a safety net as they adapt to life outside its embrace. It's truly an impressive adaptation that allows them to explore a wider range of habitats. This final stage is truly remarkable, the adult newt. It's a complete departure from the earlier larval forms. Notice how it's developed lungs, allowing it to breathe air for extended periods. The external gills, so prominent in the efts, have completely disappeared, streamlining its body and indicating a shift towards a more terrestrial lifestyle. This transformation isn't just about breathing, it's also about survival. Adult newts are active hunters on land, preying on insects 
and other small invertebrates, a significant change from their primarily vegetarian diet as larvae. It's an incredible example of adaptation and specialization. The metamorphosis process we've been discussing isn't always a clean break between larval and adult forms. Interestingly, some populations of newts have developed a fascinating adaptation called pedamorphosis. It essentially means remaining childlike. These individuals retain characteristics from their larval stage, like external gills, even as they mature into adults. This allows them to stay entirely aquatic throughout their lives. They never fully undergo the terrestrial transformation we typically see in other newt species. Imagine a creature that skips a major part of its life cycle and remains happily adapted to an underwater existence. It's a testament to the incredible diversity and adaptability found within the amphibian world. The transformation a newt undergoes is truly remarkable, and it's largely controlled by internal chemistry. Hormonal changes, particularly fluctuations in thyroid hormone levels, are the main force behind metamorphosis. Think of it like this as a juvenile newt. Its body releases specific hormones that maintain its larval form. But as it matures, thyroid hormone production increases dramatically, triggering a cascade of developmental events, limb growth, tail regression, skin changes, and so on. It's an incredibly precise process orchestrated by these tiny chemical messengers. While genetics set the stage for this change, environmental factors also have a surprising influence. Water quality plays a vital role. Pollutants can disrupt hormone signaling and hinder development. Similarly, food availability impacts overall health and provides the resources needed to fuel such a dramatic transformation. A newt struggling to find enough nutrients might experience delayed or incomplete metamorphosis. The fascinating journey from larva to adult newt is it a uniform process. The timeline for metamorphosis, that incredible transformation, really varies quite a bit. It's influenced by several factors, like the specific species of newt we're looking at and even the conditions around it. Some aquatic larvae might rapidly develop legs and lungs, transitioning to terrestrial adults in just a few months. Others, especially those living in stable, resource-rich environments, can take years. They might maintain their larval form for extended periods, gradually developing adult characteristics over time. This prolonged development allows them to really capitalize on the resources available in their aquatic habitats before venturing onto land. It's truly fascinating to consider how adaptable newts are. While they typically progress from the aquatic eft stage to a more terrestrial form, there are instances where they can actually revert back. This isn't just a theoretical possibility, it's been observed in the wild. When faced with significant stress, perhaps a sudden change in water quality or a predator encounter, or when their preferred land habitat disappears. Some newts will transform backward into that earlier eft stage. It's an incredible example of phenotypic plasticity, demonstrating a remarkable ability to adjust their physical form and life strategy based on environmental cues. Imagine the evolutionary advantage that gives them the chance to essentially reset and try a different approach to survival. The transformation a newt undergoes its metamorphosis is truly remarkable and incredibly sensitive to environmental conditions. 
It's far more than just growing legs. It's a complex sequence of developmental changes spanning from aquatic larva to terrestrial adult. This process involves significant hormonal shifts, substantial physical alterations, and a complete shift in lifestyle. For example, the larval stage, or EFT, breathes through gills and relies on aquatic food sources. As they mature, they reabsorb those gills, develop lungs, and adapt their diet to primarily insects. Disruptions like pollution, even subtle changes in water quality, can interfere with hormone production, leading to deformities or preventing metamorphosis altogether. Similarly, habitat fragmentation isolates populations, reducing genetic diversity and making them more vulnerable to disease and environmental stressors that impact their development. Understanding these vulnerabilities is absolutely vital if we hope to protect newt populations a healthy environment equals healthy transformations and ultimately a thriving species.